please turn with me to James chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 13 through 17, and then we're going to bounce around a little bit from there. But uh, So I want to start this morning by asking a simple question. What is it that you want in life? What is it that you're seeking? What is it that you're living for? And if those things that you're seeking and wanting, if you got them, would it truly make you happy? The Lord has really been stirring my heart with these questions this morning. Because as we know, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? What is it that this world can offer to the longing soul? Nothing but temporary pleasures, temporary things. But the eternal is only found in Christ. Joy, peace, and love. Stability in life. So let's go ahead and just begin with, with looking at these verses here. We're going to start from verse 13. And I'll just read verses 13 through 17. It says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. And here's that profound question. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you speak to our hearts, that you give us the humility and the wisdom to, to just learn from you, to listen to you, Lord, and to, to apply your word to our life. Remove all distraction, Lord, and, and help us, Lord, to just recenter our hearts upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. So it starts off. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such town and do this and that and we have a way of making plans and excluding God. That's all of us. Sometimes we're sincere about the things we want to do, and we're not intentional about leaving God out. But as that song we sang, Take Time to Be Holy, it says something pretty profound. It says, and run not before him. Sometimes we get so busy, caught up in the rush of this world, the rush of life, that we're just doing a bunch of things, but... God has kind of been put on the back burner. He's kind of begun to take second place of, of what should be priority in our life, and we're running about doing all these things, and some of them are good things. We get a little prideful. We get a little boastful. We say, I'm going to go do this, and I'm going to achieve that, and I'm going to make and do these things. And yet, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. We have no control over that. We can't see into the future, can we? We don't know what tomorrow will bring. And then James asks this question, what is your life? What a profound question. You know, for some people, you could ask them that question and their life would be revolved around their loved ones, their job, their career, their hobby, their pleasure. And that would be their life, wouldn't it? But for the Christian to live, is Christ and to die is gain our life is Christ alone but are we living that way so what is your life you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes throughout all of scripture you see that concept of how fleeting and fragile our life is and yet how precious it is and how we should be living our life in all wisdom. I'll read a few verses. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to remember, my time is limited. I don't know if I have tomorrow, so let me live for Christ today. Let me show love to those around me. Let me keep the important things, the important things, and not get so distracted with the rush and the flow of all that is going on around me. We can get sucked into that current so easily, can't we? Psalm 
Chapter 39, verse 4 through 6 says, O Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Surely a man goes about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather it. It's saying that it's all turmoil. It's all vain when we begin to live our life for just the temporary things of this world. And so the prayer here is, Lord, help me to understand and know and to keep my heart focused on the eternal things. Living to put God first, to do his will in my life. And that we would have that humility that comes with, hey, I'm susceptible to forgetting all that God has done, to forgetting my rightful place, to forgetting that God is to be honored and glorified in every part of my life. So, Lord, keep me from getting sucked into the flow of just the temporary. But my heart focused on the eternal things of God. So then it, it, then it goes on. For we are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And then it says, instead, you ought to say. So instead of in our prideful boasting saying, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to go do that and no one can stop me. It's saying, hey, wake up. Your life is fleeting. You don't know what tomorrow holds. So make sure you're living for what the Lord wills. It says, instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills. So here we can take a moment and say, you know what? The things I get to do in my life is because the Lord wills them. All the good and perfect gifts, all the, the moments of, of joy, the, the things that God allows me to experience, it's because he has willed those things. So then from our heart, we give him the glory and the honor of knowing that it's because of his will we get to go and do things. Not of our own accord, not of our own ability, but because he has given us breath and life and strength and grace. You know, by his grace, we have come this far. Can't we look back in our life and agree that we're right here today because of God's grace and his mercy, his protection? His providence over our life. So instead, it's, it's saying for God's people to take a moment to reflect, to give him glory. And instead of just going about our life, doing this and doing that and making these plans, we would take a moment to acknowledge God, right? If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or do that. It's by God's grace that we woke up this morning, right? Remember, for we do not know what tomorrow will bring. And then it goes on, verse 16, as it is, you boast in your arrogance, and all such boasting is evil. See, when we begin to think that we have what we have in this life because of our own doings, and we begin to just leave God out of our plannings and our dealings, it's pride, it's boastful, it's arrogance, it's sinful. All such boasting is evil. Then verse 17. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Sometimes our heart is becoming hardened, not by the things that we're doing, but the things that we're not doing. Our heart becomes hardened when we're leaving God out, when we're not getting into the Bible, making time for prayer, fellowshipping with his people, our heart slowly becomes hardened and callous. We're getting, again, sucked into the, the draw of the world, planning this and that, leaving God out, not acknowledging him, not living for him. And that was another thing that God has really said on my heart is we're in the, the holiday season, and it can become chaotic. We can get so busy, so distracted, and we make all these plans of doing this and doing that. And if we're not careful, God can become distant. And all of a sudden, the little thing that we allowed in becomes a habit. All of a sudden, we're not going to church one week, and then we don't go three weeks in a row. A month, two months, we fall away. 
We begin to backslide. We don't want that. These verses also mention the word boasting. Who are we to boast in ourselves? But the Bible makes it clear that we are to boast in Christ. Galatians 6, 14 says, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Our confidence, our boast, our trust, our hope is in Christ, not ourselves. Jeremiah 20. Or Jeremiah 9, 23 through 24. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast in their wisdom, or the strong boast in their strength, or the rich boast in their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. Our Lord, our God is so good. He delights in showing kindness and mercy and justice to us sinners. Now, we can boast about that. We can boast about what Christ has done, not about what we can do, not about those things we're planning and, and that the things we're going to do, but about what Christ has done. So next, I want us to turn over to uh, Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> And, I would, and, and we'll look at verses 38 through 42 here. So, again, reiterating the point I made earlier about the holiday seasons, about all the distractions, all the, the busyness. You know, with it, Scripture made it clear that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places to pray. And he got alone with God. Right? He made time to pray to the Father. And we need to follow that example, don't we? How often our heart, our soul is, is thirsting for God, and yet we're too busy, too distracting, too just, we got our feathers ruffled, we got too much going on, and we're neglecting our relationship with God, aren't we? Luke 5, 16 says, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. It's profound. It's something we must never neglect. Take time to be holy. As the world rushes on all around us, that we take the time to speak with the Lord. And not only to speak, but to listen. Lord, speak to my heart that I may hear. We also have that tendency to do all the talking and none of the listening, none of the, none of the true seeking after the Lord's will, seeking to hear what he has to say. You know, we need that timely word spoken into our heart and into our situation, but how can that ever happen if we never go before the throne of grace in our time of need? How can that ever happen if we don't sit at the feet of Christ? So let's read these verses. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. It says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. So as we unpack verse 38, it says that they went on their way and then Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. It may be a, a slight stretch here, but I have this concept of being welcomed into a house. And so you have some people over, right? Part of your house is really clean and you welcome, in, you welcome them in there. But you know the back room or the closet or the back bedroom is just a mess and you kind of shut the door. Don't we all do that? I'm wondering if maybe there's some parts of our life that we've shut the door on and we're not letting Jesus in. We're not surrendering that part of our house, our heart, 
to the Lord. And we're keeping some things back. We're keeping some things hidden. And we're not letting him in there. It is something to think about. But it says she had a sister. So Martha had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. That's what we need to be doing. Not being so busy and distracted, but making the time to just sit at the feet of the Lord and drink him in. Our soul, our heart is so thirsty and so desperate, and oftentimes we don't even realize it, do we? We wonder why we feel a little empty. We feel a void. We feel this distance. And yet we just carry on doing this, and doing that, going here, going there, and the Lord becomes second. But it says Martha was distracted with much serving. You know, you can even be distracted with good things. That you're so much serving and doing this and doing that, but you're neglecting God and you're failing to listen. Failing to hear what the Lord is really telling you and what he's wanting. And what he's trying to show you and teach you and pour into you and we're just missing it. Sometimes I miss it. I need the Lord to help me to not be so distracted. So distracted with much serving. Let me ask you, are, are you distracted today? Is there... Things that are getting in your in the way of your relationship with God. And then it says that she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So here we are. We're all distracted. We're all busy. We're all doing our own thing, leaving the Lord out. And then when it doesn't go our way, we turn to the Lord and say, Lord, don't you care? And all the time he was speaking to us. All the time he was reaching toward us, to pull us back in, and we were ignoring him. And then we try to say, Lord, it's your fault. Because we miss it. Because we're distracted, and we're, we're too busy. And then she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Sometimes we feel all alone. But yet God is always so near. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He always welcomes us back, even, even when we go about in our arrogance. And then she says, tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. Are you troubled and anxious about many things today? You know, when we begin to distance ourselves from the Lord, that's what's going to happen. We're going to get all anxious and troubled about many things. But when we humble ourselves, when we acknowledge God, when we are, when we slow down enough to just sit at the feet of Christ, he can bring us peace and joy. He'll help us. He'll strengthen our faith. I want to read some verses here. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So often we just don't let it be made known to God. Of course he knows everything. He knows what we need before we ask of him. But prayer is how we align our, our hearts with God's will. Prayer is how we get ourselves steady and right before the Lord. So often we just don't bring our cares, our anxious thoughts, our troubles, our worries to the Lord because we're too distracted. Or we're too busy. But then so it says, don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. And be thankful. And then it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. We must be guarding our heart and our mind. And this is something only God can do. How can we have the strength to carry on if we are not going to the source of our strength? How can we have the wisdom to know what the Lord wants if we don't go to the source of all wisdom? So we carry on doing this, doing that, kind of like Martha here. She's just anxious, troubled. She's, she's doing all these things. But she's neglecting the one thing that is necessary. Isn't that so much like our own life sometimes? Like instead of building our schedule around God, we're just trying to fit God in there. Any, any little spot he can get fitted in there and call it 
good. And, and we wonder why we feel kind of helpless and weary and drained and, and, and distant from the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. See, when I get too busy, I forget things like that. I forget that the Lord cares for me. And I try, to care, I try to take care of everything myself. And I can't do it. I just, I can't. I see this. This is wrong. I want to fix it. Then there's this. I want to do it. And it's just too much. And I forget that it is the Lord who carries my burdens. It is the Lord who strengthens me. It is the Lord who cares for me. But see, when we get too distracted, too busy, we just forget these things. That's why it's so important that we get renewed in God's Word. If we're not in it, our mind's going to be being filled with other things. I want to read Luke 12, 22 through 26. And, and you can turn there if you want. We're just a page over or two. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Oh, how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his lifespan? That just sticks out to me. I can't do this simple thing of adding a single hour to my life. For God, that is so simple. But for me, it is completely impossible. If then you are not able to do such a small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? It takes faith and trust, reliance and surrender upon the Lord that it is he who watches over our life. It is he who cares for us. But are we seeking him? Are we seeking him every single day? Putting him first. You know, I have to start my day with the Lord. I know sometimes circumstances are hard for people, but as the saying goes, to get started on the right foot. You know, sometimes, you know, just when you wake up, there's so much of life hitting you all at once. And I have to be reminded that God is in control. That he watches over my life. That he will provide for my needs. And that I have to trust in him and lean not on my own understanding because there's a lot of things in life that I can't control, that I don't understand, that I want to change, but I can't change them. And if I get my mind all busy and focused on all of that, I'm going to be worried and anxious and troubled. What I need is to be renewed and refreshed and revived by the Spirit of the Lord. And I need it every single day. John 16, 33. Jesus says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. Jesus is our peace, and that's the only place we're going to find peace. We may find some sort of a temporary fix, but it will never last, and it will never give you rest at night, that's for sure. But only the peace of God that surpasses all understanding can guard our heart and our mind. Then he goes on to say, in the world you're going to have trouble. Brothers and sisters, in this world, we're going to have trouble when we forget that, don't we? And then we get surprised when these things come about in our life. And it just takes us off guard. But remember, when we're building our life, our foundation is Christ. Building our life upon his word, when the storms of this life come, we're going to stand. But we're not. We're going to get tossed back and forth. In the world, we're going to have tribulation. But Jesus says, take heart, I have overcome the world. We must never forget that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. That we can have peace and rest. We can be renewed and be revived, but we got to be sitting at the feet of Christ. Getting into his word. Asking the Lord to speak to our hearts. To remove the hardness, the callous, the distraction. Psalm 46.10. God says, be still and know that I am God. That is hard. It's hard when things are not going your way to do that. To 
because we like to fix and do and have control. <laughs> you know, he goes on to say, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God is going to bring about his perfect plan and his, his purpose in the context of eternity and the context of our very own lives. So to be still and know that he is God takes faith, takes trust, takes surrender. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. It's hard to wait, isn't it? But how we wait matters. It's not a waiting of like waiting in a waiting room where we sit and do nothing. It's, it's a trust and it's a faith. And we, and we follow our Lord and do what he wants us to do as we wait upon a certain circumstance that we need him to take control of in our life. But are we willing to give that control up? Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. So I wonder how many of us are like Martha today. Do we find ourselves in that position of just kind of maybe even distracting ourselves from some realities that we don't want to face, right? That's another tendency we have. It's, a, it's kind of a defense mechanism. Hey, if I'm busy enough, I don't have to deal with some things I don't like. I don't have to deal with these thoughts. I don't have to deal with these feelings. See, it never heals us, does it? To get healing, to find peace, to be renewed and restored, we're going to have to sit at the feet of Christ. We're going to have to choose that, aren't we? We can choose to get up and carry about our business and do this and do that and go our own way and then just fit God somewhere in the schedule down the road and then wonder why things aren't working out, wonder why our relationships are falling apart, wonder why our heart is hurting, or we can choose to say, Lord, here I am. I need you. I'm going to listen. I'm going to learn from you, Lord. Help me not to be so distracted, not to be so anxious and troubled about all these things, because one thing is necessary. And that was what Mary did. She sat at the feet of Christ and she worshiped. She listened. She obeyed. She had her priorities right. Sometimes my priorities get a, get a little out of line, I'll be honest. And I, look at, and I look back and I'm like, man, that happened quickly. So I want to end with this verse. This is always a verse that I, I really love. Because, you know, the Lord doesn't do things the way we expect all the time, does he? He works in our life in profound ways. Acts 4.13, it says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. They were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. You know, whatever people say, man, let it be said that those people have been with Jesus. I can see that in them. I can see that Jesus, that was their life. They lived for Jesus. Their treasure was in heaven. Even if they don't really believe what we believe, that they can see that there's a, a difference. So I want to close with these few points. Not being too busy for Jesus. We've got to guard our heart. We've got to guard our mind. But being bold to live for him in a world that despises him, right? That's what these men did. They were arrested, and then they were told not to preach about Jesus. But instead, they had courage. And that only comes by being ref refueled at the feet of Christ. This isn't something that originates within <clears throat> us. We can't do these things apart from God. So when we get too busy for God, we're going to see we don't have the strength to live the kind of life that God is calling us to live. That no matter what people may say of us, that they could recognize and see Jesus in us and through us. And let us be conscious that we would never boast in what we can do or in who we are, but that we would boast in the Lord and in what he has done. So as a final thought, we are all faced with the fleeting 
darkness of our life. We are all faced with this reality and with one profound question to answer. What is our life? Let us not be those who wasted away distracted with the worries and the busyness of this world, but instead of those who are surrendered, humble, ready to serve. More importantly, ready to listen to God and learn from Him. That whatever the Lord may call us to do, we would do it wholeheartedly, trusting in Him, making time for God, and not making excuses. You know, soon we're going to put these earthly tents aside. That's what Peter said, I believe. And, and the things that we have lived for will be tested in the fire. And it'll be shown for what, is, for what it really is. One day all the things we've lived for are going to be, the Lord is, is going to test those things in the fire. And only what is done for him will last. You know, I long for that day to hear well done, my good and faithful servant. Let us stay focused on Christ and not distracted. We need to be praying for one another because we're not to be going through the journey of life all alone. Remember, Martha was like, Lord, don't you care that I'm doing all this all alone? We're not to be doing it all alone. The Lord is with us. And we're to be doing this together. So pray for one another. Love one another. Encourage and uplift. Strengthen the faith of your fellow brother and sister because you have no idea the secret battles that we go through sometimes, right? We kind of clam up, hold it all in, and we're too afraid to let others know. That's why prayer is so important. So in the busyness of this season, make time to get alone with Jesus, to listen to him, to learn from him, to love and worship, and to spend quality time with him. And don't, don't allow excuses or the things of this world to come in between you and your relationship with the Lord. But I must warn you that it does take a deliberate action. This is your responsibility. You're going to have to say, I am going to make time for the Lord. So that's what we ask the Lord to do today, is to turn our heart's focus back onto Him. That we would come into the, the fullness of joy which is only found in his presence. That we would humbly sit at his feet to listen and to learn. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this word, Lord, this admonishment, Lord, that we mustn't let the busyness of this world distract us from what is truly important. Lord, help us to just keep our focus on you. Lord, we, we are prone to stray. We are prone to be anxious and fearful. Lord, help us to trust in you. Give us wisdom. Give us strength. And may we always rely on you and serve you wholeheartedly, giving you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.